Hello everyone, my name is Sophia Poitou. In this case presentation, I will be focusing on community acquired pneumonia. Pneumonia is an infection of the lungs that can cause mild to severe illness in people of all ages. Common signs include cough, fever, and difficulty breathing. Community acquired pneumonia, or CAP, is a common infection associated with significant morbidity and mortality. The incidence of CAP is estimated to be 25 cases per 10,000 adults and represents the eighth most common cause of death in the United States. It is estimated that the median age of patients presenting with CAP was 57 years of age. Moreover, the approximated excess expenditure is over $750 million. There are a number of pathogens that cause CAP. Organisms have been traditionally classified as typical or atypical. CAP pathogens are identified depending on their ability to be detected on gram stain or standard bacterial cultures. Studies have indicated that advanced age is linked with higher incidence of CAP, resulting with more severe disease, the need for hospitalization, and higher mortality rates. On the other hand, CAP in an ambulatory setting is more common in young adults and is usually due to atypical pathogens. Bacterial, um, typical bacterial pathogens include strep pneumo, H. influenza, and M. cateralis. Strep pneumo is still the most common bacterial agent responsible for CAP. S. aureus has not been considered a typical cause of CAP in people who are healthy. Rather, it is a well known to cause severe CAP after an influenza infection. Moreover, MRSA has been linked to a multi lower necrotizing CAP even in healthy patients. Other pathogens, such as K. pneumoniae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, occurs primarily in patients with chronic alcoholism or diabetes mellitus. Typical bacterial pathogens usually present with fever, dyspnea, productive cough, and often with pleuritic chest pain. Pneumonia with purulent sputum is usually caused by typical pathogens with the exception of Legionnaire's disease. On the other hand, atypical community-acquired pneumonia pathogens can be differentiated by zoonotic or non-zoonotic pathogens. Zoonotic pathogens include Chlamydophila, Cetaci, F. tularensis, and C. burnetti. Non-zoonotic pathogens include Legionella species, M. pneumoniae, and C. pneumoniae. Atypical bacterial pathogens are usually subacute and associated with extrapulmonary signs and symptoms. Atypical pneumonia is also called as the walking pneumonia. Continuous exposure to contaminated air and frequent aspiration of nasopharyngeal flora make lung parenchyma susceptible to virulent microorganisms. Most pathogens reach lower respiratory tract as inhaled contaminated micro droplets. Complex interactions between the virulence and quantum of aspired or inhaled microorganisms that reach at lower respiratory tract, integrity of defense barriers, and host immunity status decide occurrence of pneumonia. Most CAP are bacterial in origin and follow a brief viral upper respiratory tract infection. Infection by intracellular bacteria such as the Mycoplasma pneumoniae, Chlamydophila, and C. burnetti occurs through contaminated aerosol inhalation route, whereas CAP due to strep pneumo, H. influenza, and other gram negative bacilli is due to microaspiration. The individual's immune response to CAP depends on the organism involved. Less noxious organisms are typically destroyed by the macrophage engulfment which results in moderate immune response. On the contrary, the organism is, is highly virulent or is present in great numbers. A series of immune responses occur, including inflammation, cellular infiltration, and activation of the immune cascade. When the patients can't clear pulmonary secretions, a secondary infection may develop. Now moving forward to the case study. A 62-year-old Asian male presents in a clinic for a fever and productive purulent cough that started four days ago. He admits chills, weakness, difficulty breathing, and a 3 out of 10 chest pain associated with coughing. He admits using over-the-counter herbal medication every four hours, but states, it only helps a little. 
He adds that the cough is worse at night and it prevents him from getting a well-rested sleep. Today, the patient is returning to the clinic for chest x-ray evaluation. The patient is a smoker for 30 years. He has a history of hyperlipidemia and type 2 diabetes. He denies history of asthma, heart disease, recent travel abroad or exposure to TB. He denies sudden weight changes and recent illnesses and hospitalization. He denies hemoptysis. He denies any other extrapulmonary issues. Additionally, he admits that he does not visit his primary provider regularly because he is usually very healthy. He denies alcohol misuse and illicit drug use. On physical exam, the patient's vital signs are unremarkable except for the elevated temperature at 100.4. His nose has mild mucopurulent discharge. Nasal mucosa is erythematous. Posterior turbinates are inflamed bilaterally. Tonsils and posterior throat are inflamed. Cough is present. Rails and crackles are heard over left lung base. There is an increased tactile fremitus, bronchial breath sounds, and egophony. On chest x-ray, consolidations are seen with patchy bronchopneumonic pattern in bilateral lower lobes. There is also a left lower lobe opacity with pleural effusion. And on sputum culture, it is positive for strep pneumo. The diagnosis is pneumonia due to streptococcus pneumonia. Other differential diagnoses prior chest x-ray and sputum culture include acute bronchitis, congestive heart failure, pulmonary edema, pulmonary fibrosis, and bronchogenic carcinomas. Chest x-ray are recommended in all patients with suspected CAP to exclude conditions that mimic CAP and to confirm the presence of an infiltrate compatible with CAP. Gram stain and culture of sputum is reliable diagnostic if performed on a well-collected specimen without saliva contamination and if a predominant organism is present. Gram stain shows few or no predominant organisms with patient, in patients with a typical CAP. Blood cultures from all patients with CAP may also be collected because some bacterial pathogens, such as the strep pneumo and H. influenza, are frequently associated with positive blood cultures. Several nonspecific lab tests are often performed during the workup of community acquired pneumonia, particularly if atypical CAP is expected. Serum transaminase, serum sodium, ferritin, phosphorus, and CPK levels may provide evidence supporting a particular pathogen, such as the Legionella. CRP levels and procalcitonin may help predict the likelihood of a bacterial origin for CAP. Lactic acid, white blood cell count, BUN, and creatinine may be used in categorizing the severity of illness. In the outpatient setting, Patients with CAP are treated with antibiotics as outlined in guidelines from the American Thoracic Society and the Infection Disease Society of America. With the increase in antibiotic resistance, evidence-based prescribing is crucial. To decrease the chance of antibiotic-resistant microorganisms developing and to reduce the chances of adverse effects from antibiotic treatment, a short five-day course of antibiotic treatment is recommended. Research shows no difference between long and short-term course, course of, antibi of antibiotic treatment of CAP, and the short course has been shown to reduce the risk of C. diff. Other treatments include acetaminophen or NSAID for pain and fever, early ambulation, appropriate hydration, and nutritional meals. Systemic steroids, if reactive airway involvement secondary to CAP exist. Bronchodilators and cuff suppressants may also be ordered. Follow-up for outpatient treatment is usually 48 to 72 hours after the initial diagnosis with an after the initial diagnosis, with another follow-up appointment with a healthcare provider in two to three weeks. Instruct patients to contact their provider if any unexpected complications develop. Patients who smoke should have additional follow-up at six to twelve week mark for a repeat assessment and chest X-ray to rule out underlying path pathology that may have been a factor in the original CAP diagnosis.
teach patients that the expected guidelines for recovery, which includes fever resolved in one week, notably decreased chest pain and sputum in four weeks, notably decreased cough and breathlessness in six weeks, resolution of symptoms in three months, feeling back to normal in six months or less. It is also important to remind patients on medication indication side effects. Instruct patients to finish the course of antibiotics and to increase rest and fluid intake. Instruct patients, especially smokers, to stop smoking. Remind patients about standard precautions and the need for frequent hand hygiene to prevent the spread of disease. Inform patients that there is a vaccine, such as the pneumococcal vaccine, available to prevent pneumonia for high-risk individuals. Patients with underlying comorbidities may follow a different or extended course of recovery. The guideline treatments mentioned for community-acquired pneumonia is from the Infectious Disease Society of America and American Thoracic Society. Many tools, including the Pneumonia Severity Index, CURB-65 and CRB-65, SmartCOP, and the American Thoracic Society criteria are available to help determine if the patient with CAP can be treated successfully as an outpatient or if a hospital admission is required.